So uh, here we're going to go with part two to this. If you haven't seen part one, I would suggest you take the time to watch it because these are built one upon another. Also, if it would be fair to me and to yourself to watch this all the way through because I, I have analytics going on YouTube and a lot of people just stop watching. And it's like I've heard this before, but... And, and maybe you have, but there might be something that I say that you haven't heard. I'm not trying to make these long, but I would appreciate um, you following through and watching it to the end. Um, this one is about why Christians believe the Bible stories like the flood and and um, Noah and the ark and, and, and uh, Jonah and the fish. You know, I realize that these stories are seem to be pretty far-fetched and similar, if not the same, almost as fairy tales. And so you ask, how could someone who is intelligent, and I hope I'm intelligent, could believe such a thing? And that's an honest question. And in my last video, I kind of talked about how uh, Christians come to a conclusion about God because they understand, they see the way the world works. And, you know, there, that you can understand design. Um, things don't just get, don't just spontaneous create. Things don't just keep going on forever and get better. They seem to just tend to get worse. And so if we work by that logic, what we observe and what we see can lead us to conclusions, then that would seem counter to believing what the Bible says about these things. Because when was the last time you saw the sea divided and men could walk through it, or a major flood, or just whatever the story you want to talk about in the Bible that seems to be crazy. But there is a difference, and here's the difference, because there is, like we talked about last time, a foundation. You know, I don't care if you are an atheist, an evolutionist, or creationist, whatever. If I mean, my goodness, if you look at this world... It is an amazing place. The human body is amazing. I mean, think about it. You have this amazing thing called the eye that God created, or however you think it was created. But the eye itself can't do a thing because you have a part in your brain in the back that reads the information from the eye. The eye could go bad, and this part's good, but you won't see. Vice versa. Some people have had damage to their back of their head, their brain, and their eye is perfectly fine, but the brain's not working. And so the intricacies of how things work together is just overwhelmingly awe, I mean, awe-inspiring. So, you know, when you think, how did this all come to be? When you even think about the earth and what is required for life on earth and, and the survival of life on earth with, with the radiation coming from the sun and with meteorites and comets and how we have the magnetic field, our atmosphere, the planet Jupiter is in the right spot to suck in most of the uh, the meteorites and stuff that come in. And so it's just amazing that we have a world, we have life, we have people. And um, so that in itself right there should just blow our minds how this could be. Whether you think it just happened by itself or creator, it should just blow your mind. How can it be? Now, that's a foundational question that leads up to this. If all of this could come to be somehow, if all of this could come to be beyond our comprehension, then certainly if there is a God who created it, he created it from nothing then certainly he could do all these other things. As strange as they mean, he could he could simply do them. So for for a Christian, he just has to for a Christian, he just has to say, you know, while it may be not something we experience all the time, we can say, well, yeah, but if the God of this universe created everything out of nothing, then certainly to manipulate it in this way can be done. And and besides the Bible. God in the Bible declares that these miracles, like the part in the Red Sea and such, is not an event that happens every day. He says that. The whole point is, these are not things you're going to experience every day. They are something extraordinarily special. 
And so that's what we take them out as an extraordinary special act that is not part of the normal um, courses and way of life. And so based upon that, it, a Christian can accept the fact, even though it doesn't seem plausible, even though it, we don't know how it's done, it, it, we just accept the fact that if God can create everything out of nothing, then certainly um, God could do that. And so this is where we can come to this conclusion. And one of the things that gets me about when I hear atheists talk, it's like, it's, they're like saying, well, I don't know how, I don't know how the sea could part. That's just ridiculous. How would that happen? How would that take place? By by saying, questioning its ability to take place because of our lack of knowledge of how, says that anything that is beyond my knowledge, anything that's beyond my comprehension, shouldn't or cannot take place. That's exactly what an atheist says. Is Again, it's a narrow-minded approach to life. That's what I've been trying to show. Atheists have a much more narrow-minded approach to this world than a Christian because an atheist says, if I don't understand it, I can't measure it and I can't see it, then it certainly cannot be. And so this is something that needs to be considered. An atheist just doesn't want to believe, either he doesn't want to believe it because it requires a God, an, interv- a, an, an intervener, because an interventor or whatever you would call it, someone who intervenes, an intercessor or however you would say it, because in an atheist worldview, is this is started and there's processes that keep it going and there is no such thing as an outside force. It's a closed system where the Christian is willing to say, no, I think it's an open system. That's how it started. It started by an open system. And therefore, as an open system, then there's the opportunity to manipulate it. And we may not, we don't even understand how it's manipulated. We don't even understand how the world's created. So that's the answer to that. Uh, it's not that Christians just believe in a fairy tale for a fairy tale, but they believe um, it because it's plausible if there's a God who created everything. Now, the next one, the next video I'm going to do is, you know, why why should we trust those fairy tales from any other fairy tales? I mean, why couldn't they all be true then? And there's a reason for that, and it's because they come from the Bible. And right away, so many people in this world, I hear them say so much about the Bible, and it's so much out of ignorance. Just one case, I remember a guy saying uh, in a group of men, he said, oh, the Bible's just written by... A bunch of men and I said well have you ever read, read the Bible and he was like well no and I said so you're a big expert and I have found that to be true even some of the the smartest uh, evolutionists and atheists um, and I don't want to mention any names but I've heard them make remarks about the Bible but they lack the un they lack they they understand a passage or a detail but they lack the whole scope of the Bible and the whole point of the Bible and how it works together. And by lacking that knowledge, by understanding that knowledge of the Bible, uh, they come to some inerrant, they come to errant conclusions that would make then these stories seem to be just another fairy tale. So this is something we will discuss in the next one. If you like this, please hit the like button. Please subscribe so you won't miss the next one. And if you find it somewhat interesting, I would ask you to share it. Thanks a lot. Uh, It's been a, a good time doing this, and I hope we get a lot more interest. Have a great day.